Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's on this 25th Sunday after Pentecost. And of course, just a reminder that immediately following the worship service, um, we will um, commence to, the, to Misa Hall for uh, 
lunch and for our congreg annual congregational meeting. And uh, this is an important congregational meeting because one of the things that we're going to be uh, doing today is voting on a, a new constitution. Um, David and I have spent much of the year working and revising a new constitution, and so we will uh, we'll have the opportunity to vote on that today. There will be um, Bible study, uh, pastor's Bible study, this Tuesday at 1230, uh, from 1230 to 2, and we will be uh, looking at together at uh, Philippians, the second, the second chapter. And we invite, invite everyone to join us. Are there any, um, any announcements from the congregation today? Any announcements? Yes? Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to let everybody know Lady Lions met yesterday and Cheryl and Pat and Deal were our hostesses. The ladies, we had a real good time, we always do, and we talked about being thankful and grateful, and the ladies wove some banners. Um, after that song, Weave, Weave, Weave Us Together, Should, I think you know that song. Um, the banners are not quite finished, however, they are displayed um, in the Measle Hall today for the uh, meeting so you can take a look at it and hug a lady lion um, next uh, month we have um, a theme of cookies and we're asking every lady to bring a batch of cookies and we have pastor Marcia Sebastian coming to do our worship for us all right thank you so much any other announcements from the congregation any any God sightings any God sightings yes come on come on forward there Good morning, friends. Good morning. I just wanted to uh, say with the sermon of last week uh, I had, which was really tremendous, that God is love. When I was baptized, Missouri Senate, when I was 12 years old, our theme was God is love. And a couple of months ago, there was a lot of things happening around the world and different things. And I was praying to the Lord, and it was so powerful because he said, love everyone. And I had so much peace. I had so much peace about that. You can understand the different things that are happening and everything. And it was just absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And one other thing I wanted to share with the uh, Israeli-Hamas uh, war. I was praying about that too. And the Lord said, they have choices. They have choices. And that's, that's the main thing. And I pray that we make good choices. Thank you, friends. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else like to share today? Then I'll share a brief, a brief God sighting. Um, last night, or late yesterday afternoon, last evening, I um, was blessed to be able and honored to preside at a funeral service for uh, dear friends of mine uh, who happened to live it in Deep Creek Lake. Um, they visited here uh, one, one Sunday, a young couple. Her, uh, her mother, her mother had died and I just want to say it was such a beautiful celebration and there was such an outpouring of love upon this family and we shared a delicious delicious meal together and we prayed and we lit candles in her in her memory um, it wasn't held in a church because part of the family is Roman Catholic and the other parts 
Lutheran. So, so they compromised and had it on a golf course uh, or, or a, at a clubhouse at a golf course. But nevertheless, it was, it was such a beautiful time to be able to be there. It was, it was uh, both, both peace that, that I needed and, and felt that God was speaking to me during, during that time and the ability to share with a lot of people uh, with whom I had, I had, never, I had never met. And, and to share with them um, my deep belief that in fact, yes, God, God is love and can do no other. Let us take a moment now to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please stand as you are able. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. People of God, hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sin, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are free to love as God loves. Amen. Oh, uh -huh. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. your people for evidence of goodness. The way fruit is sought in a vineyard. Send your righteous judge and find goodness in your faithful children. Amen. You may be seated as we hear God's holy word for us today. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it. He hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall stand it, it shall excuse me and it shall be devoured I will break down its walls and it shall be trampled down I will make it a waste it shall not be pruned or hoed it shall not be overgrown with briars with and thorns and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns it will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant, are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God's word is our great heritage and shall be ours forever. To spread its light from age to age shall be our chief endeavor. Through life it guides our way death it is our stay lord grant while time shall last your church may hold it fast throughout all 
generations. Today's second reading is also from the prophet Isaiah, beginning with the 11th chapter. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from our living God and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's lessons both come from Isaiah, and they're only six chapters apart, but their mood and their message couldn't be more different. In Isaiah chapter 5, God's message to the leaders of Judah gravitates between sorrowful and anger. In Isaiah chapter 11, God's message is comforting and even hopeful. What's going on here? It's as though God is bipolar. Well, first, let's reflect for a moment upon the role of a prophet like Isaiah. You see, the role of a prophet is to see and to hear with a third eye and a third ear. You see, prophets also see the world with a social vision, and they listen for the suffering cries of God's people. Prophets seek to look and listen beneath a superficial surface level and to bring moral discernment, God's righteousness, to expose the truth. To be a prophet, one needs first to care enough to care. To care enough to care to care enough about God's people to care about their well-being. Second, prophets need to have the courage to speak truth to power. Like when Moses is called by God to go to Pharaoh, to go to almighty Pharaoh and say, let my people go. And third, Prophets seek to be the change we want to see in the world. For us to be the change 
that we want to see in the world and to impact our historical circumstances. Now in Isaiah chapter 5, the first lesson, God delivers a sorrowful, even angry soliloquy about planting a vineyard with loving care. But the choice vines that God planted produced wild grapes, sour grapes. And as a consequence, God proclaims that all the protection and care God had provided will be removed, destroyed. Why was God so angry? Well, it was about the year 722 BC, and Ahaz was the king of Judah. The Assyrians had just sieged the capital of the northern kingdom, Israel, which was Samaria. And so in an attempt to protect Jerusalem, King Ahaz goes to Assyria and cuts a deal, a bad deal, an unfaithful deal. Bad King Ahaz promises to pay tribute, to pay money, taxes to the king of Assyria if he spares Jerusalem, and Ahaz agrees to begin to worship the gods of Mesopotamia and to put idols, to put idols in the holy temple in Jerusalem. In other words, rather than rely on the god Yahweh to protect them, the people of Judah would agree to worship other gods, a violation of the first commandment. God's anger was directed, and this is important, God's anger was directed toward the religious and political leaders of Judah. But all the people would suffer the consequences. The good thing about God's nature and God's character is that God can't stay angry with God's people forever. In fact, God can't stay angry very long at all. Because just six chapters later, we see that God's love, mercy, and forgiveness are steadfast and sure that God's mercy is everlasting and that God's mercy overcomes all of God's anger. So just six chapters later, we hear God's words of comfort and hope and promise to those same people as we are told that a shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. In other words, that vineyard that was destroyed because it was producing wild grapes, sour grapes, well, a new shoot, a new leader will come forth from that stump and begin to live righteously. And that branch shall be who? Hezekiah, right. Hezekiah. You see, Hezekiah was Ahaz's son. And Hezekiah was a righteous king. Hezekiah made things right again. He reestablished God's holy temple. And yes, it is true that we often look at that, at that metaphor and it brings forth to us the image of Jesus. Because for us, that is the leader we look to. And so God says in, in chapter 11 that even, even unnatural things will happen. That even where one would expect a skirmish, like my son's dog chasing my cat, it won't happen. 
Like a wolf, it will be like a wolf lying down with the lamb and the calf and the lions together, and they will not hurt or destroy any more on God's holy mountain. God provides the promise of future peace on God's mountain where all creatures and all people will live in harmony. Certainly we pray for that day to come soon. And we need it now, as Rick said, more than ever. People of God, as we see the devastation being wrought upon the Holy Land, we are called to care enough to care. To look and listen with our third eye and our third ear, to dig beneath the surface and to speak the truth to power. And the truth is that the people of Israel and the people of Gaza are both suffering because of the radical extremism of both Hamas and Netanyahu. Religious extremism, I don't care if it's Jewish, Christian, or Muslim, is always dangerous. And it is the people who suffer. We see that day after day, now, in the Holy Land. And so, as people of God, what do we do? What do we do when we see the continued fighting between Russia and Ukraine? What do we do when we see continued war and skirmishes and rebellions in places like Haiti and Colombia and Venezuela and Somalia and Ethiopia and Sudan and Nigeria and Nicaragua and El Salvador in Brazil and Argentina too often it seems like we don't care enough to care far away, not, not my problem, it's not my circus. Too often I think we as Christians metaphorically pay, play trivial pursuit. We get all wrapped up in the trivial things in life the little things, the little skirmishes, the little disagreements we have with our friends or our family members. And those are the things that we focus on, trivial pursuits. But God calls us to care enough to care to care to, enough to care about the innocent civilians in Gaza and Israel who are being tortured in many cases, starved in other cases because of their lousy leaders. Today, in Argentina, there is a vote. They're voting for a new president today in Argentina. And one of the candidates, surprise, surprise, has already declared that the election is rigged 
and that he's going to lose. Already declared it. How do we get to this place? And you know who will suffer. It's the people of Argentina, which has one of the fastest growing inflation rates in the world. The last time I checked, I think it was over a thousand percent inflation in Argentina. People spend every, every ounce of money that they have today because they know tomorrow it's just going to be more expensive. And yet it's the leaders, the privileged, the powerful, who seek and use forms of extremism, whether, again, it is often religious and always wrong. I want to take a moment, if I may, to talk or to get some insight from Nadia and Raymond. Because my understanding is that probably you were Assyrian originally, right? So, now not the same Assyrian as we were talking about in Isaiah. Now almost all Assyrians are Christian, correct? Not all of them, but the majority. Okay. I'm Muslim. Okay. But we have a lot of, of Christian. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the point the point is the point is this that that before Islam even existed in the seventh century, many Assyrians actually became Christian between the first and fifth centuries. And so we always have to be a little bit careful, right, if we, if we peg people into particular holes and make sure that we don't do violence to their heritage or their own beliefs. But again, whether it is the Crusades the, the Christian Crusades against the Muslims and the, and the Muslims against Christians, whether, whether it is the Holocaust, Christians against Jews, no matter where it is, what it is, that, the anti, that what tends to come out is, is anti-Semitism and Islamophobia, and they're both wrong. And we as Christians have to stand up and say, no, you are our sisters and brothers. We are all part of the God of Abraham together. And therefore, we must both have the sensitivity and also the courage to be prophetic in our own day and to say that wherever there is poverty, something is wrong. That wherever there is discrimination, something is wrong. Wherever people are subjugated, something is wrong and is not according to God's will for us and for our lives. Because in Isaiah chapter 11, we heard what that will of God is, that the wolf will be able to lie down with the lamb, the bear and the lion together, that even children will be able to put their hands on, on the holes of poisonous snakes and nothing will happen to them that 
on God's holy mountain, there shall be war no more. Amen. God, you give talents and gifts to all your people, and you equip the church to serve. Turn us from fear and self-serving ways that we may use our talents to glorify you and encourage our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You have been our dwelling place from one generation to another. Sustain the life of the planet. Protect farmlands and harvests. 
direct all people in wise stewardship of all the earth's resources. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You call us to honesty and integrity. Instill these values in the hearts of all nations and their leaders. Free any who are oppressed. Expose all corruption and bring redemption to victims of injustice. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Where there is sickness or sorrow, bring healing. And where there is loneliness, reveal your love in community. We remember before you today, Jim and Jack, Susan and Ruth, Carol and Alice, Judy, Elsie, Holly, Suzanne, Scott, Jody, Barb, Mike, Kenny, Jan, and Kay. We pray, O oh Lord, for your presence with Diana, Tom, Mark, Matt, Madison, Chris, Jerry, Adam, Aaron, Claire, Dylan, Pat, Rob, Sarah, Bill, Jack, Ginny, Maya, Cian, Gabriel, and Julie, and for all caretakers, O oh Lord. And we give you thanks for Nana and Louise, for your unending love, and for all of our ministry volunteers here at St. Mark's, and for Alex. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the faith formation ministries of our church. Give to all children, youth, and adults who study your word the breastplate of faith and love. Shape us by your love and show us how to encourage one another. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, you are faithful in all generations. For the promise of life and rest and for the witness of those who have died in faith. Particularly today, we remember Elmer, David, and Cindy. We praise your goodness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. with one another. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, Strengthen us to labor in your field, and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you.
in the night in which he was betrayed. Let me say that part again. In the night in which he was betrayed with Judas and Peter both sitting around the table and all those who would desert him. Nevertheless, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Take and eat and do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. Amen. May the God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen.
in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. and drink and, and, and be seated. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, you give us all good things. All good things come from your hands, and so for this we give you thanks and praise. Nourish us with this meal that we were about to receive so that our bodies may be strengthened and our minds and spirits may be blessed, that we might reach out to all those in need this day and throughout this week. As we gather around tables this Thanksgiving, let us always keep you first in our hearts and remember those in need. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Go in peace to love and serve your neighbor.